Hi, everyone, and thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in and hearing what I'm about to share. Um, I recently had a visit with Jesus and Mary from Divine Truth um, in Wilkesdale, Queensland, and it was a really big experience for me and one that I feel like I'm still that's still processing and moving through my system. Um, yeah, even the lead up to getting on to sharing about my experience, I have felt the gravity of the insights and the experiences that I received uh, from my trip to go and see them. So that's still moving through, which I'll share more around that as, you know, as I share um, my experience. I guess to start, um, for anyone who doesn't know Divine Truth or Jesus and Mary, um, which I'm still coming to know them myself, uh, I've only been following their teachings for three years now, I think it might be. And um, I'm still getting familiar with, with their teachings. And so uh, it's still very brand new for me. So forgive me if I stumble and feel a little bit awkward as I, <laughs> as I share um, along the way. Um, yeah, I have, even as I'm speaking, I'm noticing that I have this feeling of getting it wrong, of not wanting to um, get it wrong because it was actually a really powerful experience for me and a very life-changing experience and humbling experience and loving experience. And I can feel how I deeply desired to, um, there's a part of me that deeply desires to do it justice. Um, yeah, but to also not, not get anything wrong. <laughs> um, so uh, divine truth is the teachings that Jesus and Mary, so um, Jesus and Mary who from the Bible, uh, um, so to give you a little bit of a background, um, A.J. Miller is the who he was born to be in this incarnation and um along his along his journey he actually discovered that he is Jesus and that took uh, a lot of moving through stuff and so as a result he's been able to um really bring forth the teachings of truth and of God and along the way that has attracted obviously his, well, not obviously, but has attracted his soulmate, Mary, um, who incarnated into this life as Mary Luck. And she then went through her own journey of recognizing and um, returning to that truth within herself. And, you know, if you want to know more about their journey and, the very, very beginnings of all of this, then um, I'm going to pop the link to the teachings in below. So you can actually go to their website, you can go to their YouTube channel and you can find out more about them. And since that discovery, Jesus has been teaching God's way. Jesus has been teaching the laws of love that, allow us to really live in God's love and also Mary as well, you know, um, as they came together in their, in their union. And so they, this is divine truth, the teachings that have been birthed. Um, 
they also run a not-for-profit company that also help to share these teachings. Uh, what I feel is on an embodied uh, level, in an embodied way. Um, and what I mean by that is through the actual experience of living these teachings, you know, living these truths. And God's way is a company where you can actually, you know, you can come and essentially volunteer. Um, and I think there might be some other ways that you can, uh, yeah, meet them and, and whatnot. But essentially the way that I went was I went to volunteer. Um, and what the volunteering looked like is working on um, Jesus' property to, you know, with land care. And it's essentially helping people to really understand the truths of, of life and what is loving. And it was actually a really beautiful experience because it was through the care of the land and, you know, the interaction with the people and really coming to have a relationship with um the earth and others and life through God's way. And so I have had a desire for quite some time now to experience, to meet Jesus and Mary in person, but to also receive their teachings and to also volunteer with them. Um, and I didn't know what that looked like. And how I was introduced to, you know, I was introduced to their teachings about three years ago through a mentor that I was working with and everything, when I listened to the teachings just rang true for me. Um, well, no, that's not true. Not everything. Cause there were some things that I still had to, <laughs> I had to move through. Uh, but I felt the truth of it in my soul, of the possibility of it. Um, uh, and it was essentially it, the teachings encapsulated everything that I have been through in my journey and learnt throughout my own journey. And it's as if it extrapolated the truths of everything that I've learnt into these one teachings, which is why... I really loved them so much, you know, um, and have also started to just, yeah, which is how I got into them essentially. Uh, <clears throat> so I was, I've been following divine truth teachings for the past, past two years, watching the videos on YouTube by myself, like with myself, but also uh, I was continuing to work with this woman on and off over these past three years and receiving uh, what I thought were the teachings through her. Uh, but now I recognize that it was through her essentially rather than through my own experience. Um, and so recently what occurred was um, my desire to explore the teachings for myself, you know, to really come to know them for myself. And so to give you the, the scene of what actually occurred, of how this desire came about, um, I... Yeah, I, I stopped working with this woman at the, I think, beginning of this year. Um, and have just been on this self-exploration. You know, what what is my relationship with God? What is my relationship with these teachings? Um, and I just have a desire to to really know the truth, you know, in my soul. And so anyway, last year... A year ago, I broke my ankle and healed it um, without any intervention and 
pain medication. But I also, and when I say without any intervention, what I mean by that is without any medical intervention. So I was also working with this woman who was supporting me to, you know, to move through all of the emotions that I had held behind uh, this experience and what this experience was for me. Um, <clears throat> my desire to see Jesus and Mary, um, well, no, I had a desire, also had another desire to do something special for the one-year anniversary of that with myself, you know, without any extra intervention, but just with myself. So come Thursday afternoon, basically my first experience to even getting there was really messy and it was like a shambles. And I really noticed how much I was holding on to this, you know, to whatever I didn't want to hear. I noticed how much there was this part of me that deeply desired to be up there and what that then surfaced was this part of me that was really trying to hold on to these unloving ways. And um, what that looked like was it was a Thursday afternoon. I live in Sydney, which is essentially a whole day drive away. Um, I randomly, which it's never random, um, looked at my emails and saw that there was an update on the website that um, had been posted that they were actually having a volunteer day on the Saturday, the Sunday morning starting at seven. <laughs> so I decided to go. And what that then looked like was quickly having to put everything just rush you know and there was paperwork that needed to be filled out there was certificates that needed to be gotten and it was all very last minute and all very very rushed and I'm so glad that it was this way because there's so many things within that that reflect back to me how unloving I can be towards myself but also um yeah just reflects so much information back to me so I jumped in the car and I was driving up um and yeah, just getting everything done last minute, even to the point where the night before I had forgotten to print out these this paperwork, which I needed in order to participate. And where I was staying, so I ended up staying at my parents' house. Um, they the printer wasn't compatible with my laptop and it forced me to reach out and ask for help and this was at not eight o'clock at night and this was a big piece that I really got to recognize for myself was you know where I don't let myself be supported by community where I haven't in the past really opened up to community you know and being supported by others um, and letting that love in from others so thankfully I trusted in the guidance that was coming through and reached out to some family friends and um, they were so loving in um, Oh, they were so loving in just offering me um, to be able to come down and print out what I needed to print out. And it was so last minute. It was, you know, 8 o'clock at night. I had to be left by um, 3.30 the next morning. Um, yeah, just really receiving that. Oh, that love from other people, you know. Oh, it's just such a gift. And this was a big, 
a big thing that I really recognized was the gifts that we're always giving each other, um, how everything is a gift. <laughs> everything is a gift. Um, oh, oh, uh, yeah, and I was also on a juice cleanse, you know. I had been doing a juice cleanse for 104 days up until that point. This was day 105, the day that I decided to go there. And I decided to break this juice cleanse. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so on the way, I actually feel like I was quite disconnected from what I was about to experience and receive. Um, I feel like my soul knew, but I was just on this kind of like autopilot in order to just get there. Anyway, it was really beautiful. I arrived and um, immediately, yeah, it was, well, no, not immediately it was met. I, I kind of rocked up at their house and was like, am I doing the right thing? Is this the, like, I didn't want to disturb them. No one else was there. I was early. Like, <laughs> anyway, lots of emotion surfaced. And then, um, <clears throat> yeah, eventually uh, Phoebe and Sorsha, um I was met with Phoebe and Mary and Sorsha uh, and was shown what we were to be doing for the day. So we were actually working over on the caretaker's property, which was a separate location just down the road from Jesus and Mary's property. <clears throat> it was interesting, however, to notice, and this was really subtle at the time I wouldn't have actually put voice to this and this was something that Jesus brought to me at, uh, later on in the day to notice that um I initially saw Jesus in his kitchen I was standing doing something at the window of his kitchen and I initially saw Jesus at the window and my experience with Jesus was I got really nervous and um yeah just scared and this is all related into me putting men on pedestals. But when it came to meeting Mary, there was this greater ease within my body that I felt. Uh, so that was the initial experience that I had. Um, and then we, yeah, it was really beautiful out on the land. So we went to the caretaker's property and the volunteering was for four hours. Um, we were clearing vines that had gotten out of hand um, from parts of their property. And it was, it was, there was quite a richness to the experience. Um, there was a lot moving through me. I had, yeah, I didn't realize how big it was for me because I had just driven, you know, nearly 16 hours to um, be there. Plus I had also had the last minute stuff happening plus, you know, doing physical work plus being on a juice cleanse as well there was a lot emotionally that was surfacing. Um, so I could feel how I needed a lot, a lot of grounding. Um, it was one of the things that I really noticed was how loving everyone was. Everyone was so helpful. Um, so welcoming, so loving, so friendly. Um, I could feel as well how dedicated to taking responsibility for themselves and living in love they actually were. And that showed up as um, <clears throat> oftentimes in life, and I experienced this too, we can, you know, make small talk. Um, if there's someone new to try and make them feel comfortable or there's just this like 
small talk that comes and no one did that. I didn't experience that at all. In fact, it was this genuine desire to know and share in the experience of, you know, someone to get to know me, but also, and if they didn't want to know me, then they, you know, we just didn't have a conversation, which I also actually felt was quite, was very loving. (laughs) Um, So their genuine desire to actually know me and know about me, but to also be in an exchange with me. Coupled with that was, you know, one of the things on uh, a part of God's way and divine truth is self-responsibility and that also, and speaking truthfully, you know, speaking truth and something that I felt that I really noticed was very different to how I've seen life go was you know we were um being shown by Sorsha how to do the process of what we were doing and there was myself and um another another guy there and she was teaching us how to do it and she'd spoken to this guy around um you know, she'd said a couple of times that we need to do it gently. You know, we need to clear the vines gently as to not leave anything in the ground. Um, and then she had to say it a third time. And I think it was three times, maybe it was two. But anyway, after the third time, after she shared it, she just honestly said to him, you know, that's the third time I've had to say that to you. And it was just really (laughs) honest and straightforward and um, just pointing out in a really loving way, hey, you know, I've had to say this to you three times now because, you know, you've you've not been listening for whatever reason. Um, And it was just really loving. She didn't have any attachment to how he would respond to it. Um, He responded uh from what I experienced well to it um just in terms of like he I didn't feel like he was triggered by it or I didn't see him be triggered by it um but what I took from that was how loving it is to just speak directly and that was another thing that came up for me (laughs) throughout the day so so we did the work and everyone worked together it was just such a loving experience to all come together in in a desire to care for the land and a desire for the teachings and a desire for the work it's you know love itself god itself um, and god's to know god through these teachings and these laws and these way these ways you know And then after we finished, um, and and the other piece that I also want to put into this, like there was just processes. There was really loving processes to the point where we used these, um, there was great intention and great care behind everything that was done. So not only down to, you know, the divining of it all, but also, um <clears throat> at the end we cl- we cleaned up all the tools that we used and what that looked like was and i think there were maybe 15 to 20 of us there maybe but what that actually looked like were there were different cleaning stations so you know we used um gosh i can't even I don't even know, like, you know, garden tools and numerous garden tools, plus also using um, to clean out the buckets. You know, we used buckets to carry the weeds in. We used also like um, 
a dustpan and brush to clean out the, the dust in the buckets, the end. And what that looks like was cleaning all of these items individually, um, rinsing them, and then also drying them and then putting them back in their position. And it was just including the brushes, you know, um, cleaning the, the dustpan brushes um, and rinsing them and then drying them and then putting them back where they belonged. And the whole process was, you know, that in itself was just so intentionally loving and seeing everything as a gift, you know, this was really impactful for me to witness how appreciative they were of every little thing because it was a gift. And that was so obvious in this action. <clears throat> um, so when we finished the volunteering, uh, Jesus would come out and, and we'd go back to Jesus and Mary's or we went back to Jesus and Mary's. And Jesus and Mary shared teachings, you know. Oh. It was essentially like it wasn't a seminar of anything. It was just like sitting around having a chat and um, Jesus sharing, speaking about these truths and God's laws and how to have a relationship with God. And, you know, this was different both times that I went. One of the things, and it went for, I think, on the first I think it went for about five to six hours over both times, you know, and not once did I, like, it was so engaging and so honest and everyone was, you know, interactive and asking questions as well and so loving that you could sit there for the five and six hours and not feel like you like feel like you could be engaged for that amount of time it was yeah just I'm still you know I'm trying to, I'm sitting here trying to figure it out but I can't figure it out but it was I don't really have the word for it but it was um yeah it was just loving and beautiful and easy um So to share uh, what came through for me, what, you know, Jesus, and I say that it's a gift because you can't, it was a gift, a powerful gift that I, that has completely changed my life. <clears throat> Towards the end, Jesus was discussing soulmates and I have felt like I had met my soulmate um, for the past, I think in 2019, I felt like I'd met him and I've been, my personal journey has been on this experience of being, you know, just meeting everything that arises within me between meeting him. So I hadn't met him I'd only met him in person last year and had been in conversation with him, you know, um, up until like over that time and just meeting every emotion that he triggered in me um, and that, you know, trusting by me following my passions and my desires that was actually the thing that would attract him back into my life, which it was. Um, and I greatly, you know, I greatly experienced this love with him that I've never experienced before, you know, ever. Like it was, uh, 
I remember one time when I <clears throat> was in the early stages of conversation with him. Um, there was something that he said that penetrated my soul so greatly that I was blown. It's like I felt everything was possible. I felt everything was possible. And it was this feeling that I had when I was a little child of the truth. Anyway, so I was speaking to Jesus and Mary about soulmates and we got on the conversation of this and my experience, my my journey, because something that I experienced with this man in our last interaction was not being able to speak the truth. Um and, you know, this is something that Mary said was the truth is sexy, which I love, but don't love. <laughs> um, and what something that Jesus shared with me around this, you know, I greatly got to see how much of a, a delusion I'd been in or illusion I'd been in um, <clears throat> was my intergender issues uh wounds with men and one of the things that greatly came forward was how much I put men on a pedestal and because of that it would be hard to actually know one way that it would be really hard to know who my soulmate actually is because of this wound um additionally to that <clears throat> He also shared that I had a spirit influencing me um, and I feel like I still have this spirit with me. I feel like I'm still working through stuff around, um, yeah, why there is this spirit influence, um, w why she is with me. But I had this spirit influencing me through the wounding of my with my mom and what came up with my mom was um how the, you know I had felt her jealousy and competition and that was something that I hadn't processed yet and that's still processing you know I've been experiencing yeah I've just you know so much grief and so much fear since being with them and receiving that news because obviously this was all very, very big. Uh, and as a result of that online, as a result of that not wanting to feel how, you know, that felt to have my, my mum be in competition with me and as a result be jealous of me, this woman spirit, uh, I was then able to attract this woman's spirit and who felt like she could uh, look after me better, um, <clears throat> love me better, um, and, yeah, just knows what's better for me. And through that, she also, that it was her desire to have a relationship with this man through me. Um, whew, which still feels like, you know, it's, it's processing through. So I greatly got to recognize through those two pieces alone, just how, oh, and something else that Jesus asked me, you know, directly when he asked me about, you know, what my soul, what my soulmate feels towards me, this man feels towards me immediately what came through was that he doesn't care about me. And that was really eye-opening because up until that point, um, I was under such an illusion that it wasn't that he doesn't care about me. It was actually that um, he, you know, it was my law of attraction that he you know, that we weren't together. It was all my, you know, my injuries and his injuries that we weren't together, that we, 
Um, it was something that I wasn't doing, um, that I was doing unlovingly. You know, I was not tending to these wounds that was pushing him away. So <sighs> that was, yeah, all of that information has been huge. And I greatly got to see, yeah, how much of a, an illusion I had actually kept myself in. Um, and, you know, it, it was beautiful the way that Jesus presented this because he <clears throat> he shared how it wasn't, you know, he wasn't, he shared it in a really loving way, really, really loving way. And he said, you know, he wasn't saying that it, he was my soulmate or that he wasn't my soulmate. He was just saying that, you know, with this, with these wounds alone online, it was greatly influencing my ability to actually know the truth of who my soulmate actually is, um, to be able to recognize my soulmate in an interaction. <sighs> Ooh, so, yeah, that was actually really powerful. Um just made some notes so I <laughs> could not forget anything. Yeah, I guess just re um just sharing, you know, what what a gift this information actually truly is, you know, just how you can really see like this has been life changing for me. It has absolutely and entirely been life changing for me. Um, <clears throat> just that that piece alone, but not only that, e even having the experience of going and and volunteering with them, um, because. What I also recognized for myself was how easy I, how easily I was able to keep myself in facade where I live through just watching the teachings online. And by doing that, you know, how I did that was essentially just through um, <clears throat> being able to pick and choose what I watch, being able to take in what I want to take in, you know, rather than actually be there in person and um, take in the environment, take in the experience, take in the truth of what is actually there, but also the truth of um, what is in the space, the truth of the teachings in the space, not just on an intellectual under, under understanding an intellectual level like Jesus talks about but on an embodied level you know on a felt sense on a on a knowing um and this this is this is really important for me um I feel like it's really important for everyone everyone um it was vastly different going and experiencing the love and the teachings in person rather than, and not only just through the teachings, but also through the way of living, you know, through the way that they live. And um, there have been people that have been there for, I think from memory, like years who have been following them for over a decade, following their teachings and volunteering for years. And so there's this beautiful loving <clears throat> community that you know that they that they've created that they're all created um just through this desire to share truth through you know yeah just through the desire to know god and god's love and god's laws and that is really felt how different it actually feels to experience um, that really true, pure desire from people um, and to have them live that. Um, so 
so that was the first day. <laughs> um, <clears throat> from there, I had a lot to, I could feel how I just wasn't landed in my body. And so I, I stayed with a girlfriend for a little while and then went back to um, my parents who were actually away at the time for um, a couple of nights and had to just really let everything land because it was so big and so rearranging. And as I mentioned, it's, it's still, you know, it's still all landing. Um, <clears throat> And then I had a desire. Oh, the other thing as well, which I didn't share actually, I completely forgot that I I knew that I needed to get a white card, um, but with everything last minute, with a last minute rush, I completely forgot to um, to get that. Uh, and so the morning I didn't have it and the first morning I volunteered and I just feel, yeah, just deeply humbled. I can feel that there's this unworthiness piece of um, <laughs> how loving that, that felt to really, um, you know, to show up to the space and not have the requirements that I needed, which I knew I needed. Um, but to be graced with um, permission to still participate um, in some form and be a part of the day. <laughs> yeah. Um, because they could have turned me away, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, so I um. you know that was that was another another piece like was just how loving and true and real and yeah I don't I don't even know what the words are but it was just these acts of love um I just had to feel <laughs> feel that emotion. Um, oh. Yeah, just so loving. So that was my first experience. <clears throat> I then got my white card <laughs> um, and returned the following Saturday. And this time we were clearing mother of millions out which were connected to sins and how what we're seeding and what we're planting um, everything has an impact and how <clears throat> we you know we have to be aware of that and you know with mother of millions can't remember the exact story behind it but essentially someone brought it in because f from the story I was told someone brought it in because they thought it was a beautiful um a beautiful flower and a plant um I could be wrong in that so I don't know um <laughs> but essentially it was imported uh it was brought in and it has just taken over. Um, yeah. And how by just our desire to do something that, you know, is kind of selfish. It, well, it is selfish, right? 
how that then impacts the world. Really powerful. And it was such a great, you know, great reflection for that for myself, you know, how, um, and I feel like this is also still stuff that I'm still reflecting on and looking at, but how what I do that's selfish, my choices that are selfish, you know, it's like what what are the sins that I create or that I choose to um, do that actually create really unloving um, outcomes and that impact everyone else. <clears throat> So that was um that was really powerful. Um and just really feeling from the past share that Jesus Jesus had shared with me around man, just feeling then also my interaction with, you know, just noticing what I felt off different men as well whilst I was there, um was really powerful and just noticing how, you know, from there was feelings of people not caring about me, which was another thing actually that Jesus brought to me was how I care for and love people who don't care about me. <clears throat> yeah, that was another big piece actually. Um, so there's lots, as you can see, like these are all gifts, you know, all of this is wisdom and gifts and um <clears throat> Then we had teachings that following afternoon, which were also, you know, just around God's love and having a relationship with God and how we come to know God and how coming to know God, you know, God's greatest, one of God's greatest desires is for us to have a relationship with God, you know, with, with her, but to also have a relationship with and to know ourselves which includes our soulmate. <clears throat> but in order to know ourselves, we have to know our passions and desires. And, um, you know, this has been something that I feel I have done my entire life is pursued something that I feel really passionate about and, you know, pursued my desires, like being on this great exploration of what am I passionate about? What is it that I desire? What lights me up you know what who am I you know and so yeah it was just really powerful and loving to um to hear the teachings around this and to be in the experience of this um <clears throat> And again, and, you know, Jesus brought through these ways of um, how, you know, how we can connect into God and how we can have a relationship with God um, and also gave us, um, you know, homework <laughs> to kind of do. Uh, yeah, so... And it was really beautiful, you know, towards the end, I, um, you know, again, everyone helped pack up. Everyone helped also set up as well. Like this, there was, everyone knew that in order for everything to work harmoniously, every, you know, things had to be done and people took their initiative. They asked what needed to be done, what asked, you know, they asked how could they help or they, there was no fear in coming forward and asking and it all contributed to being able for these experiences and these um, teachings to be shared. Um, and I just really felt how much of a loving, like, organism a loving 
economic economical system had been created. You know, everyone was taking, setting up chairs or setting up sound equipment or um, getting new stuff from somewhere or sweeping or, you know, everything was done with care and love. And also there was a desire to help. And it was just so loving, you know, and everything got done really quickly. It wasn't left up to, you know, two people to do everything or it wasn't left up to one person to do everything. It was like, oh, no, hang on a second. This is, this is, you know, the gift of these teachings, what needs to be done in order for this to come to fruition in the most supportive and powerful way what needs to be done it was just so powerful seeing everyone working together but also to have a desire to help and because they also knew how much of a gift the teachings were how much of a gift it actually was to be in that space in that location hearing you know, these, these truths, these teachings. And this was just such a powerful, you know, powerful piece, as I mentioned before, just how, you know, everything is a gift. Um, Everything is a gift. And seeing things in that way is yeah and I don't know what what comes first but just like you know there has to be a desire to actually want to know the truth there has to be a desire to receive the gifts there has to be those desires on board to then bring forth the like to know that they're gifts to know that they're um Yeah, just like everything is a gift, you know. Everything that we experience in life is a gift from God. Um, And it's just, you know, from that place of really witnessing things as a gift, we're able to have reverence for them and look after things and appreciate them and, yeah, really tend to them. Um, Something that Jesus said, not in this experience, but in another teaching was, um, and I won't be able to quote this exactly, but how if we, you know, if we don't have love for the earth, we don't have love for others. And I really feel from that, it's like if we don't have love for the earth, we also don't have love for ourselves and we don't. You know, we can't see um, these gifts that we're receiving. We don't see life as a gift. Yeah. So it was really big, really transformative. And um, I've come back to Sydney from Wilkesdale, Queensland. Um, So, again, very different. Um, Sydney is a big, big city uh, with lots of stuff happening and lots of people. (laughs) And Wilkesdale is near uh, Kingaroy in Queensland. It's a small little rural location um there is open spaces and um just what i would probably really attribute australian land to look like you know it's got 
gum trees and like these vast open um sunburnt country um yeah it reminds me of the the poem you know love a sunburnt country a land of sweeping plains um I don't know the rest of it but that would describe exactly this location um yeah so <laughs> I've come back and you know still being in the rearranging but also really witnessing how these teachings have permeated through my life into how I now show up in the world um yeah and and you know my work my what I'm passionate about in this world so um hmm just thinking about if there's anything else I want to share <laughs> yeah just really big still moving through lots moving through and um you know even when he shared stuff around Jesus shared the stuff around my soulmate it still wasn't you know people didn't pander to me people didn't come up and ask me if I was okay or anything like that it was people just knew that we were responsible for our own stuff and it was just yeah so powerful um so my desire is to make this a regular thing um my intention is monthly uh and yeah we'll see what else comes about but just so much humility you know so much humility and I really feel that that is Yeah, that's that's what's needed. That's what's required. <laughs> and I've met, I've had to, you know, I've definitely met and still meeting these parts of myself that haven't wanted to um, humble. Yeah. It was a really, yeah, just really, really big. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Again, thank you for watching and listening. And um, yeah, if you have any questions and you want to know anything, you know anything else, uh, I would yeah, be happy to share. Yeah. And um, I've also popped the popped the link to there to Jesus and Mary's website below. <clears throat> also to G to the blog God's Way blog that. Um, gets posted on on you know what happens regularly there um and also also to their um divine truth um youtube channel which has an infinite infinite amount of teachings there so yeah go check them out highly recommend just anyway go check them out if you feel drawn